In this video, we're going to look at JavaScript variables and arrays. Now, every scripting language is made up of the same core fundamentals. You have some sort of method of creating output, variables, control structures, loops, and functions. So in this video, we're looking at that second concept, variables and arrays. Now, also, one of the most common programming tasks is fetching some data from some sort of data source, whether that's an API or a database or just an external file, and then writing code to get that content from a list onto a web page. Now, what that process typically looks like is you have your data source, you use a series of functions to extract that data from the data source into an object or an array, you then use loops to loop through that list of records. You check the data using if statements to make sure it's good data. And then if it's good data, you use variables and arrays and some sort of output command to take that data and place it into a web page. Now, in this example, we're focusing on that last step. So let's forget about the first couple steps. We have some data inside some variables and now let's place that data into a web page. So we're just looking at that last concept. So just for a sample topic, let's use a list of resources, a list of websites. So let's create a new file and I'm gonna call it variables.html. Right, so let's create a basic page with our basic HTML elements. And we'll throw in here a title. And using our list of resource, list of resources as an example, let's say we have one resource at this point, And we have a series of variables, a link name, and I'm going to use W3Schools, a link URL, and a link description. Right, so now that we have that data in variables, how do I get that data from those variables into a web page? So at this point, if I open up that document, we have our data in variables, but at this point, nothing is visible. So to place that content from the variables into our document, we can use document.write. So let's first place our link name into our website. So if I save and refresh, there is our link name. Now notice link name is not in quotes. If I place this in quotes and then refresh, it is outputting the text link name, not the variable link name. So think of it like math class when you have a, an equation and inside that equation you have variables like x and y. To solve that equation you just take the value of x and the value of y, you place that into those variables and then execute the equation. So in the same way when we are outputting this line JavaScript will take the value of those variables so for example, in this case, W3Schools, replace link name with W3Schools, and then concatenate this text. So if I refresh, we now get W3Schools formatted in an H2 tag. If I open up my developer tools, 
I can take a quick look at my HTML and you can see there's my H2. Now I do have a second H2 there. I forgot my slash here, so let's throw that slash in to properly close my H2. And now if I refresh, that looks better. All right, and now let's continue on with our link. So next, I'm gonna document.write my link. Now I do find when people are learning code, they will often look at that first example, the H2, and then when it comes to adding a link, they'll follow the above example almost too much. Remember the end result here is valid, well formatted HTML. So a link tag should look much different than an H2 tag. So there's my current H2, there's my current link tag. So what's missing with that is the href attribute. So a link needs an href. Now to avoid any issues with quotes, I'm gonna add single quotes for my HTML and I'll use double quotes for my JavaScript. And now if I save and refresh that, we have a well-formatted link. Now, it is very important to keep track of your quotes here. So here we have an open quote, and its matching close quote is this quote here. This single quote opens there, but closes here. So it looks a little strange, but you just keep, need to keep track of which quotes are JavaScript quotes, which quotes JavaScript is using to determine which text is just text as opposed to code, and then which quotes are your HTML quotes. So in this case, my double quotes are JavaScript quotes. They are representing the start and end of text or a string. And then when it's all put together, these single quotes wrapped around my URL make up my href attribute. Now do notice that in the inspect element, they are double quotes. Uh, that's just the browser switching the single quotes to double quotes. All right, and finally, my description. Now this one does follow the syntax of our first example. So I'll just output my description. And if I refresh, now we have all three pieces of data taken from our variables, variables formatted in HTML and added to our web page. Now, on a side note, I am using document.write as an example for creating output. However, once you start practically using JavaScript, you, you don't usually use document.write. In, instead of writing content to your output, typically you are manipulating the elements, adding the elements, not document.writing. However, I use this as an example because when you compare this with other languages, document.write in JavaScript is very similar to how you would create output in PHP, Node.js, or Python, or any other language. If we look back at our example of taking data from a data source and placing it on a web page, this again is that last step of that process. We have our data, it's in variables, now we just need to place it into our content. However, when you actually work with live data, it's not likely going to be in a series of variables, it's gonna be in something called an array. An array is a type of variable that stores one or more piece of data. So let's redo this example using an array. So we'll put in our main tags again, and a title. And this time, let's create one variable. I'm gonna call it link, 
and I'm going to set it to a new array. Now this could be an object or an array. Um, they're both quite similar in how you work with them. Now instead of creating three different variables, I create one and then I use what's called a key. So here I'm saying inside my link variable, I have a piece of data called name and it is equal to w3schools. Also in my link variable, I have a piece of data named URL, which is equal to the URL of w3schools. And finally, in my link variable, I also have a piece of data called description, which is my short description. Now, outputting this content into the web page is quite similar. So I can document.write an open h2 tag. Then the contents of my link variable and specifically the name value. And then finally the close h1 tag or h2. And now if I save that and open up the arrays example, we are working towards the same result. So there I have my h2 with the title being placed from my array into my HTML content. And we'll just finish this up. So let's document.write an open a tag, href equals single quote, plus the contents of our link array, and specifically this time the URL. Close single quote, close my bracket. And I'm just going to go down a line here to avoid any word wrap. Then I'm going to reuse the contents of my link array, the URL. This is the clickable portion. And if I refresh, same output as last time. And finally, open paragraph plus the contents of my link variable the description plus a closed paragraph. And if I refresh, we now have the same result, except I have an error. So if I look at my link description, my link variable is right, and I just spelled the description wrong right here. So I'm just missing an R. So save that and now I refresh and there's my description.